Hi, my name is Kate and today I am doing another learn to sew in real time step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, so if you haven't gotten really into sewing yet, if you still need somebody to talk with you through most of the steps, then this is a pretty good series for you. Um, I will show you all of the steps for the gown pattern um, M8132 Dress A. It is a Regency style ball gown and it is one of the simplest dresses that I have ever made. To save myself time, I went ahead and I cut out all of my pieces, um, both my fabric pieces and my lining pieces. Um, make sure when you are getting ready that you take note of what pieces we actually use for dress A, because there are three different patterns in this like pamphlet. So the pieces that we will be using for dress A are 1, 2, 3, 14, 19, 20. And then on the underlining, we will also use pieces 4 and 17. Did I say 14? 14 is the sleeve. We will use piece 14 as well. Um, so get well acquainted with the first two pages of your pattern because that is going to have all of the information on what you're cutting, how you're going to cut it out. It's going to give you all of the key um, information about like how the patterns are marked, um, how to adjust it if you need to, um, and orienting yourself to the pattern. Um, I will not go through reading the pattern. Um, if that's something that you feel like would be a great video to have on how to go through a pattern, please comment and let me know. I'm definitely open to that. But for these videos, I like to jump right into the sewing. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start. So we're doing dress A. It starts halfway down page two. So for the underlining, pin lining to the wrong side of each matching fabric section. So we're pinning the lining to the, the non-showing side. So for me, I'm using this blue satiny fabric. The wrong side for me is duller. You see there's not as much sheen to it. So I'm going to pin my lining to the wrong side so that it's nice and lined on the inside. This is a technique called underlining. Um, so it actually says underline the following fabric sections, bodice front one, bodice side back two, and bodice back three. Um, so the, those are all of the different pieces that we are going to um, pin and baste stitch. So right now I'm locating where all my pieces are. Um, to base stitch, we have two options. You can sew with your machine um, by using a straight stitch on the longest possible length, or you can um, do what I like to do. Um, sorry, the machine is what I like to do. Or you can hand baste. I cannot stand hand sewing. Um, I will do it when absolutely necessary. Um, beyond that, I prefer not to. And I will do everything in my power to not have to um, hand sew. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and start on piece one, which is the bodice front. So for me, I have this blue satiny material. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this for one piece. And I'm gonna send you on your merry way to do the other four pieces. Mm -hmm. 
So if there is a right side to your lining material, um, make sure that that is facing up away from the wrong side of the fabric. For me, I'm using a bed sheet as my lining material. So there's not really a right side of my liner. Just know that the lining, um, the way that it's facing is going to be against your skin. Um, so if there's one side that's a nicer feel than the other, go for that. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt you down here. So you can see, let me get my machine out of the way a little bit. You can see that a good working space is very um, important. As I'm dropping everything, you're gonna wanna line up the borders. And we'll go ahead and we're just gonna pin like so. Um, I suggest pinning far inside the, um, the seam allowance, which for this pattern is 5 eighths. Um, that way, we, the, the fabric will stay in place and we don't have to worry about pulling out the pins as we're basting. Um, there are little triangles on the pattern, um, on the tissue paper. I just make little notches in my fabric, you can see here. Um, to note where I need to line things up. So you can see I have a notch in my lining fabric and a notch in my fabric fabric. That's how I know things are going to plan. Um, if you have more slippery fabric, it could be helpful and useful to pin more often. If you are still newer to sewing and figuring out how to um, control your fabric, then it could be useful to pin more often. Um, any of the above. So I'm gonna get all my edges pinned down. And already I can see that like the lines of my um, bodice lining and the bodice itself are not exactly lining up. That's okay. I'm going to default to the, um, the borders of my actual fabric. So if at any point my, my lining is wider or bigger than my fabric, like right here along the neckline. What I'll do once we have everything nice and basted on there is I'll just trim that back because um, the lining is not actually gonna show out towards people. I'm just doing enough to keep everything in place. There we go. Ta-da! Next, what I'm going to do is bring my machine back over. Now, every machine is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set my stitch to the longest stitch possible. And then working on the seam allowance, which like I said, um, for this is 5 eighths or even slightly inside, I'm going to lower my presser foot and lower my needle. Um, I'm going to do two things with my hands. I'm going to keep this fabric straight in front and then I'm also going to keep a little bit of a top pull, not super tight, just enough so that it doesn't act as a gathering stitch as I am sending the fabric through the machine. The presser foot is actually going to keep this running forward 
um, but I don't want it to kind of bunch up. Go ahead and get your pedal to cooperate with you. That's why it was cooperating, it wasn't plugged in. So if a pin is about to get in your way, I suggest you just pull it out and keep going. coming out the back we just have this nice loose stitch starting to do one base stitch in each direction. So you notice I did it all the way across the bottom, um, but I did not turn and pivot on my machine and keep going up. We are going to take it off the machine, turn it, and start another basting stitch going up right here. So each time that you would normally turn on the machine, we're going to start a new basting stitch. That's going to make it easier for us to pull that basting stitch out eventually because with our basting stitches, we do not leave those in. They are meant to eventually come out. Rotating it around. Still working on that 5 eighths seam allowance. From our main fabric. So I put our leather foot down and the needle down. I'm working on that under arm area now where it goes under the arm. Um, so I'm just gently guiding the fabric along the curve, keeping the fabric on that 5 8 line on my machine the whole time. And then we're going to run off the fabric again. Lift the needle, lift the foot. I like sewing so that my needle um, ends in a down position every time. You don't have to do that. But that's my preference. I find it easier. So I think I need to keep just a little bit more control on my fabric. I do notice that it's getting like a little bit taut in certain places. Um, again, don't want it to act as a gathering stitch. So I'm just pulling it just ever so slightly. So that it won't bunch. I'll show you the difference of what I mean. You can see here, it's laying nice and flat versus here, you can see it's kind of like wrinkling and curling just a little bit. 
not the end of the world because again that that scene all of these scenes are going to come out um but it does make it lay smoother when you hold it just a little bit tense just a little tense I'm knocking pins out I'll be right here. now we're gonna go around the neckline down, needle down, and pulling it just ever so slightly on that 5 8 seam allowance around the curve as we go. I have to stop to pull it pin out. Just watch your fingers as you're working on your machine because you do not want to be trying to control your fabric and control the needle right onto your fingers. Been there, done that. Don't, don't recommend. Just helping everything line up. Keep it coming. doing with these basting stitches is we're keeping a nice long tail on each one that's going to give us a little bit of leverage to be able to try and pull those seams out later okie dokie now we're at the top of the second shoulder seam go ahead and base that got the second underarm swoosh you can see here and then that final like straight bit that goes towards the back so again just a little talk here rotate as we go off the side. Beautifully done. <laughs> In my mind, I'm complimenting you, even though it sounds like I'm complimenting me. And our final basting stitch for the bodice front. needle down. Go ahead and run that off. A little bit of tension. Beautiful. So, I, now we have underlined our bodice front, our first piece, um, with that basting stitch. So we have four more pieces to do. 
which I'm going to send you on your way and tell you to do it off screen. We've got our um, two bodice side back pieces, which is this shape. It kind of looks like an handle. And we've got two bodice back pieces, which is piece three, which looks like Iowa. I don't really know. Um, so you're going to underline all four of those pieces. Um, and then we'll have another video starting at step two. So go underline all of your bodice pieces and meet you back here.